early did you get involved and know that your own work would be such an influence for the palette and the look well, of was, Good Dinosaur? It was pretty early on because, um, you know, Pete knew he was going to make an outdoor movie and, um, you know, he knew that my favorite thing was to go out and paint landscapes in my spare time. So it was something that kind of was a good fit for the movie early on. Mm -hmm. um, and it was something, you know, immediately, I, of course, I fell in love with wanting to do. And, and um, I just kept putting um, ideas in front of him. And it just kind of kept growing <laughs> from there. You know, I had a, a big box full of um, lighting painting studies that I had done from locations um, at home from the area. And I just would bring them in and kind of let him sift through them and just to see what kind of what things he liked and you know how to spark a dialogue of, of what the film could look like. The light here, your use of light is so, it really is exquisite. Never more so than the nighttime firefly scene and your use of light through fog, clouds, because I know that's very tricky to light that. And especially since you're now doing the 360 with everything. What kind of challenges did that present for you to find that emotional tone through the light and have the lighting work in this world that's been created? Wow, that's a good good question. A complex answer, I think, because it's a complex question. You might have to break it down into <laughs> smaller chunks for me. Because um, I could go anywhere with the answer on that one. Um, you can go anywhere with it. Well, I think a lot of it was developing some new techniques for, you know, not only how we did the clouds, but any kind of cloud-like element, you know, vapor and steam and, and mist and that sort of thing that, because they've always been challenging for us to light well and to look believable and to not break the bank as far as rendering um, throughput, because that kind of stuff tends to be a bit render heavy. Um, and Magnus Renning Gay, I think that's how you pronounce his name, was the main architect behind um, developing this new volumetric um, technology that we could, and and we worked together closely on it because I, I really needed something that I could light well and light better than we have in the past. And it, the colors, the the volumes would absorb the color mm -hmm. of the light and the light color could penetrate into them in a way that we hadn't been able to do before. And, you know, that these things could cast shadows easily on the ground and really become part of how we light the world instead of being the separate painted element that was added in later. Um, so, you know, and I'm constantly thinking about, you know, the light phenomenon and how that works with it. Um, you know, how can I get, you know, just little details in of like with the steam in the um, area where there's the scene where there's the um, terraced, hot pools, you know, that you, like you see in Yellowstone with the mist rising out of it, of how to get things like, you know, a sun dog effect, effect coming through that mist with just a little hint of a rainbow. Um, you know, I, I don't know, I just have fun with, I'm doing a horrible job answering You're doing a question. beautiful job. <laughs> doing a beautiful job. I just get lost, you know, basically. It's like I just, I, because it's like you, I go down a rabbit hole in that because I've spent so much time trying to understand how light works in a natural world and how to capture that in a painting. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just took, translated a lot of that experience and knowledge into doing it for the film. Mm -hmm. It's very challenging, and I think that that's, you know, I've, it's something that I've tried to paint a lot. So I've studied and looked very closely into how those colors change based on how deep the water is. And mm -hmm. um, But I think this is a, a good example of how, you know, I was trying for something that 
isn't photo real, you know, it doesn't, those sparkles look different than what a camera would capture, but they, they have a truth to them that feels real, but there is, it's an enhanced reality. It's something that you wish they always look like. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping that, you know, it, it kind of elevates into something that it's like, wow, that looks so, I don't know. I mean, the, how you described it is what I was trying to get out of I mean, it. So it, it's, it looked, it's very gratifying to know that it, it came so through. It looks so real, but then the sparkle of light dancing on the water, that's what took it up to the next level. And that's what you feel when you see it, but nobody ever captures that on camera. Because it's very difficult to capture that on camera. And it just, I, I fell in love with that moment in, in, in what we saw. And I guess that's what I was really trying to do is capture emotion rather than capture reality. Mm -hmm. You know, capture the, how you feel when you look at something rather than the literal reality mm -hmm. of it. Well, I think for, you know, each scene, you know, I tried to find kind of what the signature things would be for that scene mm -hmm. so that, you know, the movie doesn't all end up feeling the same. But, you know, I also have to find what the common threads are going to be, too, that kind of mm -hmm. ties it all together and anchors it. Um, and it's fun when you've got characters that have strong bits of color like that because you want to showcase them and, and show them off in a nice way and balance them with each other and then kind of, you know, maybe tone down the, the world around it enough to help those kind of pop and come mm -hmm. through. And the, the character colors were a lot of fun on this film to kind of play with. And um, because a lot of it was based in reality, some of it's pretty fanciful, mm -hmm. you know, and how to get that to fit well with the, a more natural palette of the world. Um, and so it was kind of deliberate that the, deliberate that the characters weren't, a purely natural palette because it makes it a little easier for them to feel like little jewels or special things mm -hmm. in the scene. Is there a scene that you are most, that you love the most with the lighting? There's a lot of them. It would be so hard to choose because each one of them evokes something different in me that I love. Like some of them I love because of the emotion I felt like, like I was able to draw out of that some of it's because I just like the way the light sparkling on the water or um, you know the intense color or um, you know how it, it it feels very specific to a time of day or a season mm -hmm. or um, so there's there were some of them just because they make me homesick mm -hmm. you know um, so I think there's a lot of them I love for very different reasons in fact I love them all but all in different ways mm -hmm. it's like having 20 children you know? <laughs> I think I, uh, a unique perspective on the world, you know, it's, um, I spend a lot of time observing things, which can be kind of exhausting because I can't shut it off. Um, so when I go on vacation, you know, I get worn out really easily if I'm in a new place because I'm just, you know, absorbing information, visual information and trying to store it all. Um, but also, you know, if I'm on vacation, I can't go for more than a week without making images or I start going crazy because it's, it's mm -hmm. just how I'm wired up. I love making pictures. I love making images. And it's what makes me happy in life. It feels like it's what I feel like I was meant to do.